Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. When I first saw this photo, I thought it had to be a fake. What we are looking at are the columns of the ruined temple of Olympian Zeus, the ruler of the gods in Greek mythology in Athens in Greece. The photo was taken in 1858, and what makes it particularly strange is that there is something perched on top of the temple pillars. It's like a strange little brick-built house, yet on other seemingly identical photos of a similar age, and just about all photos that came after, this building is not present. Is this some kind of strange photoshop, or was somebody once living on top of the ancient Greek columns? If you look a little deeper and find older paintings of the temple, the house is certainly there, and it is also present on other historic photographs. It definitely isn't a photoshop. It did once exist, but that doesn't help us to identify what this small building is. Did someone actually live there, on top of the enormous columns, and if so, how did they get up and down the huge pillars? Why would anybody want to live there anyway? Was it Zeus scaling down and being defiant, unwilling to move house? I found the picture on a simple internet search on strange and unusual ancient sites, and it didn't take me long to come across the work of Paul Cooper, who came across the photo a number of years ago, and took up the challenge to find out what this strange little building was all about. Cooper explores the stories behind many ancient ruins across the world, whilst writing historical fiction novels. And so the ruins of the Temple of Olympian Zeus was the perfect mystery to get his teeth into. I've since found out that Cooper revealed the mystery on a Twitter thread back in 2017. He noted that the brick building on top of two giant columns didn't fit with the rest of the ruined building, as well as the artist's impressions of how the original glorious temple once looked in its heyday. He then noted some sort of historic conspiracy, an historic airbrushing, as the small hut was seemingly removed from identical pictures. In this picture, the people around the structure are all in the exact same positions, but the ugly building on top is removed. See for yourself. Here is the original photograph, and now here we can see the airbrushed one. This is an 1833 painting of the temple ruins by Johann Michael Whitmer, clearly showing the structure in more detail. It looks slightly larger with more architectural features, but it's still very much out of place. Here is a different angle, a photograph taken in 1862. So, what this shows is that the building is certainly real, and Cooper did solve the mystery, and it's all to do with a Christian ascetic, known as a stylite or pillar saint. As Cooper explains, stylites believe that living on top of tall pillars brought them closer to God, and caused them holy bodily mortification at the same time, atoning for their sins. There is no way of knowing exactly when or how the brick building was constructed on top of the pillars of the Temple of Zeus. The temple was ruined in the 3rd century AD, and when the small hut was examined in the 1800s by archaeologists, or, well, enthusiastic antiquarians, it was identified as the abode of a stylite. In 1922, Alexander Wilborn describes hearing locals telling stories of a long line of stylites who lived on top of the ruined temple, and how they had food and water brought up to them with ropes and buckets. This is all detailed in his article titled The Glory That Was Greece. The temple saints would send down their buckets, and followers would fill it with offerings of loaves and fruit. So, why is this small building not there today? Well, as Cooper points out, after Greek independence from the Ottoman Empire, efforts were made in the late 19th century to strengthen the national identity by promoting the greatness of their historic Hellenistic past. Therefore, the Greek authorities said that the crude Christian edition had to go. The airbrushing of the old photograph was the first phase of removing the ugly stylite structure from the grand old ruins of the temple and then the ruin on the ruin was pulled down. I don't know about you, but I think it would have been far better to have kept the stylite structure on top, 
Because yes, it is ugly, and no, it's not part of the original history, but it was built on an already ruined structure. And it is also part of the story of the Temple of Olympian Zeus. It shows the evolution of this ancient historic building, the history of Stylites, which is something I may never have learned about if it was not for this old picture. Have you ever heard of Pillar Saints before? I certainly hadn't. It was obviously a serious religious practice, but I can't help but see the comedic side. The fact that people actually lived in a small hut on top of these mighty ancient Greek pillars. These people thought that living there would ensure the salvation of their souls. The first stylite was apparently Simeon Stylites the Elder, who climbed a pillar in Syria in 423 AD. He stayed on that pillar for 37 years until his death. Another stylite was St Luke the Younger, who lived in the 10th century on Mount Olympus. Another, called Daniel the Stylite, lived on a pillar for 33 years. In the modern era, the practice is virtually extinct, although in modern day Georgia, Maxim Kaftaradz, a monk of the Orthodox Church, has apparently lived on top of Katsky Pillar for 20 years, although he does come down twice a week. Is that cheating? I won't judge. This region has been in use by Stylites since the 13th century, and Kaftaradz was responsible for restoring the 1,200 year old monastic chapel on top of the rock. So, I guess he does deserve his two weekly breaks. Interestingly, David Blaine's Vertigo stunt on March 22nd, 2002 was, in part, inspired by the Pillar Saints of old. Blaine stood on top of a 100 foot high and 22 inch wide pillar in Bryant Park, New York City. He stayed on the pillar for 35 hours. He said in a TED talk in 2009 that he had suffered from severe hallucinations in the final hours of the stunt, causing the buildings and structures all around him to look like animal heads. That was after 35 hours, so let's end this video by sparing a thought for Simeon Stylites the Elder, who didn't just stay on a pillar for 35 hours, but he stayed there for 37 years. God only knows how he viewed the world in his final days. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.